Welcome to the Process Mapping eCourse. Today we want to walk away with a better understanding of processes. This eCourse will review the importance in identification and development of processes in your work. In addition, we will review commonly used symbols in process maps and steps for engaging in the development of a process map. Let's begin by looking at the definition of a process. A process is a series of actions, changes, or functions that bring about a result. We engage in processes every day throughout the day. You have a process for how you get ready to work, steps for getting to your work location, and even steps for completion of work tasks. Think about an action you repeat on a regular basis. Have you ever thought about the actual steps involved in your process? As you think about your process, have you ever experienced unexpected changes in your process? For instance, you drive the same road to work each day and then you see a construction sign. The road is now under construction and your drive time is extended considerably. Changes in processes are called variation. Variation occurs when something happens in the process you don't want or expect. Every process will have problems or issues that cause something not intended. This is where the headache occurs. The better design of the process, the less variation. We all experience frustration and anger at work from time to time. Our customers also have negative experiences from time to time. We hear about these experiences through a phone call, social media post, or online customer feedback submission. Many times, the frustration and anger can be traced back to a broken process. How do you know when a process is broken? One of the first signs of a broken process is unhappiness voiced by internal and external customers. Employees may report frustration with process, such as it's, it is taking too long or being too complex. There may be no established process in place. Remember variation? When there is no standard process in place, then everyone does the process differently, resulting in inconsistent outcomes. Broken processes are also evident when you see finger pointing and blaming across departments or campuses, errors, and rework. Do you feel like you're fighting fires, sometimes the same ones over and over again? Then you probably have a process in need of attention. Before we move on, let's look at the relationships between systems and processes. Systems refer to interactions and interdependencies on a large scale. Processes refer to the components of the system. When we think about this quote from Peter Schultz, we can use the district, department, or campus as an example. If we consider the campus system, then we can identify the processes that support the effective operation of the campus. This system of interrelated processes is important to understand because many times, changes in one process can impact other processes. Processes within the system can also involve multiple customers, both internal and external thus making it critical to involve all key players in process development or redesign. As we continue our examination of processes, there are two shoulds that are critical to an effective process. First, the process should meet or exceed customer requirements or expectations. Customer requirement is a new term in customer service and focuses on particular characteristics and specifications of a good or service as determined by a customer. Why is it important to consider customer requirements in the development of the process? There are at least two major reasons. One, because we are a customer service oriented organization. And two, because we want to develop a process that isn't a waste of time. Failing to consider customer requirements can result in the process that serves no one. The second should is the design of a process map to reflect the process. The map can be designed using various software such as WordSmart Art or better yet, Microsoft Visio. A process map is a chart that depicts process steps in chronological order. It is also called a flowchart. The graphic on the screen illustrates a process map. The map design may look familiar, but how often is the map developed for your processes? There are numerous benefits to a process map. First, the creation of the map provides an invaluable opportunity to engage others in your department or from other departments. External customers can even be engaged in the activity. The level of buy-in increases by engaging others. If you also think about the process in terms of systems thinking, then the engagement of others reduces the unintended negative impact to other processes. Second, the map provides easier comprehension than written procedures, especially if your customer is a visual learner. This visual also represents the standard for the process, one that everyone can follow, hopefully resulting in less variation. Third, the map allows for easier problem identification and opportunity for efficiency. 
Once the process is on paper, further conversation can take place with regards to non-essential steps or potential confusion, sometimes resulting in process revisions. Last, the MAP facilitates training for new employees and also serves a refresher for existing employees. The process map activity can be used with the redesign of an existing process or with a brand new process. If you are working on a new project or pilot, mapping the deployment can be a great way to engage your team, identify needed action steps, and determine resource development. Process development often occurs with an existing process that is broken or where there is no formal process defined. The consideration of customer requirements is critical in both situations along with the engagement of key individuals. There are key questions to consider when developing or redesigning a process. Is this an existing or new process? Who is involved in this process? What are the customer requirements? What are the steps and sequence of the process? Can internal and external customers following the process do it well using the process map? Once you have the answers to your questions, it is time to get started. A couple of activity supplies to have on hand when you're engaging your team are post-it notes and chart paper. Post-it notes are easy to use when recording steps and easy to move around. A piece of chart paper provides a good background for attaching the steps and can easily be transported to another location for development of the map. A dry erase board can also be useful, just be sure to take a photo of the drawing before it is erased. Let's review the activity steps for redesigning an existing process. First, identify and engage team members. It is important to have employees actively engaged in the process on the team so their perspective is considered. You may also want the team to establish group norms to guide their engagement in the activity. Second, discuss and identify the customer requirements with the team. Understanding the customer requirements will ensure the correct process outcome. Third, ask each team member to think about all of the steps he or she takes to complete the process. Make sure all members have a supply of post-it notes handy. As they consider their actions, ask them to write each step on a separate post-it note. Once members have written their steps on the post-it notes, ask them to arrange them in the order needed to complete the process. Now we are ready to ask members to share their first step. The activity will become interesting once team members realize the variation in how they engage and complete the process. This variation across the team supports the need to standardize the process. The team will now need to work together, talk through each step, and come to consensus about the steps in the new process. As the team progresses through the steps, be sure to identify decision points and needed resources. The steps for developing a new process are similar for an existing process. With a new process, the facilitator engages team members responsible for the deployment of the new project. You may want the team to establish group norms to guide their engagement in the activity. As a team, be sure to identify the customer requirements associated with this new process. Remember, understanding the customer requirements will ensure the correct process outcome. Next, ask each team member to think about the process and necessary steps. As a group, begin identifying each step. Be sure to identify who is responsible for the step. Be sure to designate a team member to record the step on a post-it note and place, all, place in the order discussed. Once all steps are placed on the chart paper or board, ask the team to look closely at the order to see if it is correct and if all the steps are captured. Be sure to identify decision points and needed resources. Now that your new process has been determined, it is time to transfer it from post-it notes to a process map. The symbols on the screen are the most commonly used graphics in a process map. The first and last symbol in a map is the oval. It symbolizes the beginning and end of the process. The square symbol is used for each action step. Each action step contains a verb and a responsible party. The diamond shape symbolizes a decision point where the outcome is either yes or no. All of the steps are connected together using connection lines with an arrow on one end, illustrating the direction of the process. The document shape on the screen is used to highlight steps that reference a document. Once you put your symbols together, they should look similar to the example on the screen. Keep in mind that your process will have many steps and possible multiple decision points. As we conclude this e-course, please keep the following points in mind. Your process map may be revised a few times before a final process is developed. A first or second cycle of PDSA may need to take place before the process is standardized. 
Once the process is set, don't forget to train employees on the steps. Determine an avenue for keeping the process map accessible to employees. For additional assistance, please contact the Department of Professional Learning and Improvement, PLI, at 817-814-3400.